Welcome to this session on the Metadata Server or VMGS as it is alternatively called. VMGS stands for Video Metadata Generation Server and is part of the suite of services provided by Cisco's Video Surveillance Manager software. This session assumes that you have already worked with the basic suite of VSM services which are VSMS, VSOM and SASD. The uh, Metadata Server is a new server introduced with the VSM 7.5 release. The purpose of this server is to provide metadata services as is obvious from the name. This service runs on a dedicated standalone server. By dedicated what we mean to say is that it cannot be co-resident with a VSMS or a VSOM server. It has to be a server by itself. The first metadata service available through this server is the ability to look for luminance changes or in other words to perform after the fact motion detection. So how does it do it? The metadata server analyzes previously recorded video archives and produces metadata which is then viewable through the SASD client. Think of it as an advanced version of the existing forensic search feature. In forensic search, we were able to drill down to the relevant recorded video by using time as the parameter for search. Now using this metadata search feature, we drill down to the relevant recorded video using motion as the parameter. So the real value, value addition here is even if you did not have motion detection set up on the camera, you can do motion detection analysis after the fact as long as you have the recording available. Now let's talk about how the metadata server is set up and configured. The first thing we do is install the metadata server on a standalone Red Hat 6.4 bit server which has a 64 bit operating system and complete the initial setup of the server using the VSMC wizard similar to the way you would set up a media server but instead of enabling the media server you would enable only the metadata server so you would go through by setting your network settings which you are seeing on the screen right here you would set your date and time preferences your language settings and restart services once you set up all these parameters you would come back to this console you would see that the metadata service is activated on the server and nothing else. So media server and metadata server cannot be co-resident. So if you have metadata service running, it has to be running on its own. Now that the metadata server is running, we go to vSOM, go to operations, I'm sorry, go to system settings, go to servers, and you would add your metadata server from here. Uh, keep in mind that you can add only one metadata server per vSOM. And I've already added it. So if I didn't already add it, all I would do is click on add over here, enter the host name or the IP address of the metadata server, enter the credentials of the server, choose my service type as metadata server and choose the correct installation location and hit add. Uh, but I've already added it. So you can see it here. Once it's added, it'll just show up in the list of servers over here with all the relevant information. Now that the server is added into vSOM, we need to go and set up the recording analysis settings. Now that is done in the templates. So I would go to cameras, templates, and in my templates, I have a template which is set up already. So I will show you that template. I would choose the streaming recording and events tab. And we have a new tab inside here called analytic settings. So I click on analytic settings and choose luminance as the metadata track which I would like to analyze. So if I did not already have it set up, this is how it would look. All I would do is hit the plus button associated with luminance and that would add that to the metadata tracks to be analyzed for all the cameras associated with this template. You can set up the retention time here for the metadata. So this can be less than the archive uh, retention time, so, uh, but uh, cannot be more than the archive retention time. So depending on your needs, you can set up the appropriate retention time. Now that we have the setup here, all the cameras associated with this template can have the metadata be generated by the metadata server. Now let's look at how that is done. For generating and viewing the metadata, we would use the VSM 7.5 uh, SASD client. This feature is not available through the VSOM web client, so we have to use SASD for now. Uh, the forensic analysis tab, which is new with 7.5, is on your screen right here. As, uh, as we open the SASD, this is the screen you would see. In forensic analysis, we have an option to select motion analysis, and I would 
want to do motion video search so that's the option I am choosing here so as I click this a new window pops up and allows me to select a camera so I would select a camera by dragging and dropping from SASD I have a camera which is associated with the template we previously set up uh, for motion analysis I drop that camera in here and this is the very busy screen which allows you to generate and also view the metadata so a very busy screen here but on the top you see the camera details the name of the camera the stream on which we are doing the processing then we have a couple of seek bars so the top seek bar is showing the full range of the recording available so it's available for a full day from 6 p.m. on 319 to 6 p.m. on 320 uh, we can fine-tune that range by selecting using these orange bars so if I'm interested in a time from 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock primarily I would choose the time using these orange bars so notice the start and end times in the detail range change as I move these orange bars so now I've selected time from 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock so I can work with that range in uh, in this bar here and what you notice is there's two colors here there's green and then there is blue green indicates that the recording is available if the recording was actually not there for a particular period in time you would see a gap but this is a good archive with all the recording available and the blue indicates that metadata for that time frame has already been generated so for this particular recording there is metadata available from 756 to about 9 7 a.m. now let's say I want to generate metadata for a time new time range which I'm interested in now so I can select that time range by moving around these orange bars uh, so we have the time range from 9 7 to 9 about 9 15 selected and I click on next so it's telling me there is no metadata for selected duration we already know that by looking at the blue bar so we click OK so it starts generating the metadata you will see a message coming back saying that the metadata job is submitted and we can track progress a couple of ways you will see a gray bar showing up here which will slowly turn blue as the metadata is processed or you can go back to your SASD and from there you would be able to see the progress as well so if I go to my SASD screen select metadata job management like so you can see the details that you know this is the camera I've submitted a job it's about 14 percent through and in this number will keep updating as the metadata is being generated keep in mind this is a very resource intensive process so we limit uh, the metadata server to be able to process only five uh, processes at a time so you can only submit about up to five processes at a time so while that metadata is being generated for that time range we can go back and look at what is happening with the metadata which is already generated and how we can use it so you notice that the gray bar is almost turned to blue so the progress is going well and if we quickly go back to the screen here you know, that progress is done it just about finished to 100 percent so we generated metadata for that particular time now we want to analyze the and use this metadata so the way to do that is select a range where metadata is already available so let's select time from 8.20 to 8.30 approximately to see how many cars came into the parking lot during that time so I would just select that time click on next and there's a few parameters here I can choose so the time we've already selected uh, I can choose the sensitivity to be high uh, to, so if, if I select the sensitivity as high the even small luminance value changes can uh, trigger a motion event so I don't need a high sensitivity for this particular task here so I'm just keeping the sensitivity as low the threshold is a new parameter so I'm now I'm able to select individual blocks like this on which I, I want to perform uh, motion detection so the threshold indicates that if it is a 
it's a range from 1 to 100. If it is 1, it indicates that even if motion is detected in one of these squares, we generate a motion event. If not, if I set it at 100, then all of these squares need to have motion in them for an alert to be generated. So there's a lot of flexibility over there. There's a few other parameters here. So I can invert my selections by doing that. I can do a paint all, areas all. So a few nice uh, GUI features over there. So now I want to uh, use the generated metadata to run motion analysis. So I've selected my area. Maybe I select some more parts of the road over there to see if any cars came in. Even in that road, and click next. So if there's no motion, it will just show that there's no motion in the time range. You will see that there's a bunch of time ranges it has divided the data into. Now there is no nothing moving there, so I'm really not interested in those time zones except for this particular one where there's a some sort of movement. So I just select that clip and which around 821 you'll see that there is motion over there and a car is passing through. Um, so that is how we view motion on a selected time range. I can go back to the range, see if there's any other motion events which happen around the time. No. So if I could, if I had selected a bigger range, I would have possibly seen multiple events and that's how you get to your points of interest. So that is how the motion detection functionality works through the metadata server and hope this was helpful and thanks for staying through. Goodbye and good luck.